Hey guys, Patriot coming to you with another review. This one's going to be on the UST or Ultimate Survival Technologies Sabercut Razor Saw. Sabercut is a brand name for these uh, uh, types of jigsaw style blades. This one's a lot shorter than most jigsaw blades, but you can see I've already got this open. I just put it back into the package so that you can see what it looked like. Uh, let's see, it's a 2 inch razor blade, uh, 24 TPI saw blade, that's tooth per inch for those who don't know. You can see on the back here, it gives you some stats, it's a 2.8 inches long, closed, open 4.7, weight is 0.4 ounces or 11.7 grams. You can see the dude here is cutting through a little uh, uh, sapling of some type, some small piece of wood and down here it warns you razor and saw are extremely sharp so look out right uh, it is made in China I noticed here one of the reasons that I picked this up uh, well it wasn't really just to do a review I actually had a purpose in mind but the fact that it had a um, ultra sharp razor blade that is probably cut at a steeper angle than my knife and thus possibly sharper although not as durable I like that but I really like the idea of the saber saw in there I've used those on hack saws and reciprocating saws before and uh, you know in the past they they seem to hold up pretty well uh, so I wanted to get this for possibly uh, testing it for possibly adding it to my last ditch survival lanyard uh, which I've had in a few different videos. It's changed a little bit and I'm actually going to be doing a video that kind of covers that in the future, probably not too far off here. I've been uh, getting the videos out a little bit quicker lately. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out and get this thing out of the package. And I'll show you what it consists of here. All right, you can see it's just a, a two-slotted bay right there. One side consists of a razor blade with some kind of an epoxy coating and the other side is the saber saw the saber saw is a little bit tighter and I think that's because you might be able to see how that actually has an undulating pattern in it kind of sweeps back and forth I think it's actually binding against the plastic there and ends up making it a little bit tighter alright so one of the uh, the current knives on my lanyard here is this little Doug Ritter design knife and uh, it's, a, it's a fixed blade and I've got a fairly steep edge on that because I want it to be durable but I thought you know for really fine work it might help to have a real sharp instrument in case I I really needed to do some precise work or uh, it was uh, some type of a uh, first aid matter that kind of a thing uh, and uh, and so yeah it's important to me that this is sharp Unfortunately, the uh, first time I tried it, I was completely unimpressed with uh, how they've got that thing sharpened. And in fact, um, the more that I work with it, the less impressed I, I am. So let's go ahead and I'll show you some examples of how this cuts. All right, looking at the edge of the blade here, it looks like it is a twice ground blade. So it looks like they put a, a high grind on it here and then they came in and hit the edge with a steeper angle so we've got a shallower angle here and then a steeper angle right at the bottom uh, but what I noticed is it wouldn't even grab a, a fingernail um, you know you see a lot of people drawing blades across uh, their fingernail in order to test I guess if it's sharp and they, they think that what they're doing is drawing this across and feeling burrs it's really not the intent of it the, the intent of putting it on your fingernail is to see if the blade will take a set on your nail you can see this one just slips right off it doesn't have enough uh, edge precision in, in order to take a bite or a hook into the nail as compared to um, well here's a Spyderco military this just happens to be the one that was on me and you can see I have that just resting there even with my thumb that steep of an angle the blade is setting that means it's grabbing or biting into the nail and I'm not pulling it backwards now the only reason that you would pull that backwards is if it was slipping a little bit you'd pull it backwards to see how easily it sets doesn't matter what I do with this one it it just it just comes right off so I can even pull it backwards and you can see it still slides off so you know if that's an indication anyone who uh, knows how to check a blade like that 
Um, here's something. This is just a little uh, plastic bag. And uh, what I'll do is just kind of, you know, normally a razor blade would pull right through that, right? You can see how I'm holding it. I'm putting pressure on it. You can see the blade release once it comes out of the bag. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting some pressure on it. I actually bumped the tripod that time. But yeah, it's, it's just a joke. Here, let me... This is my Daily Carry Spider Co. I sh should probably use a smaller knife, but just to show you, I'm not putting any extra torque uh, on it. As I draw this backwards, it just goes right through. So yeah, hardly any pressure. Here's just a little uh, conventional uh, razor blade, a little Stanley utility knife. This is something that I carry in my EDC backpack, my USK backpack. Uh, I haven't actually tried this yet. Okay, yeah, that pops. <laughs> it's at least as sharp as the spider go. And that's, you can see that the blade isn't jumping out as I cut through. I'm not putting that much pressure on it. Sorry about the camera there. Hitting it with my leg. All right. So as I pull through this, you can see, not a lot of ex extra pressure. Now back to this one. Sorry about that. Yeah, it eventually works its way through. Anyhow, but as compared to, here, let's take a bigger piece of bag here. Okay, even choked way up on, on the edge here. You can see it just goes right through. This, <laughs> no chance. So yeah, it takes a while. Anyhow, I'm completely unimpressed with the uh, sharpness of the blade and why UST didn't do a better job at that. I don't know. It's just kind of, it, it's not expensive. This is only a, a $6 little gadget, but still, if you're going to make a razor blade, come on. Make it at least as sharp as a standard uh, uh, razor blade. Here, let's try some of this uh, County Com utility cord here and uh, see how it does on that. I'm pushing harder. Okay, so it finally cut through. I'm going to have to make an adjustment here. I keep hitting the tripod. Let's, uh... I mean, you can hear that the that it's whipping as it passes through. It's just a joke. Okay, there's finally, let's take uh, the, the spider co here. Again, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just normally drawing it through there. Okay, so fairly easy. Right through it. Right through it. So, yeah, obviously these these are plenty sharp, and this isn't. Let's try some paracord. Now, this is something that most of the people watching this channel have uh, have cut.
yeah so no problem there I'm gonna sharpen this guys and uh, we'll see how it does after I sharpen it all right guys I'm actually gonna do this process live for you um, that way if anyone's interested in how I sharpen stuff they can see that and they can see that I'm I'm not cheating here okay so same thing it's cutting just like before that one wasn't too bad it's cut a thicker seems like when I slide it forward and backward it actually goes through but if I'm drawing it one time through forget it so yeah let's go ahead and sharpen this this is the uh, work sharp medium grit Okay, actually, it looks like that might have done it. Let's give it one more sweep here. I think I missed right there. Yep, it's definitely hitting it. Now, uh, let's give it a quick whisk here on the sharp maker. Let's see what that does. That's what it needed right away. You know, and it's just kind of, you wonder why, if they're going to put a razor blade on something, they wouldn't <laughs> just, I mean, it takes nothing to sharpen something like this. See how easily it goes through that. Let's hit the uh, county com utility cord here. Get that stuff out of the way. All right. Yep. Right through. Right through. So you can see it's pulling with it's uh, cutting with one stroke now. Pretty easily. Let's try the uh, paracord here. You know, I, I use my Crockett style uh, wrap now on everything. If you don't know how he wraps up uh, and stores uh, paracord, head over to his channel and look for his tip on wrapping up paracord. He wraps it around his pinky and his thumb, and uh, that's kind of how I wrap everything now. One pull, and I'm not putting much pressure on it just choke up there with a couple I don't want to fling it across the, the kitchen here but you can see it pulls right through in any case uh, that takes care of the razor blade uh, but now I'm gonna go test this I don't have the 3 8 3 bar with me right now but I wanted to show you that it says here this will cut through 3 8 3 bar in 25 minutes uh, so we're actually going to test that. All right, guys, I kind of wanted to do this where I had the most light because I, I really have a pet peeve with videos that uh, are poorly lit. So I'm doing it in here. You can see here I've got some 3 8 inch rebar. And we're going to go ahead and uh, go through this with the uh, UST Saber Cut razor saw with combination um, razor blade, which I've already taken care of. So. I'm going to have to time lapse this a little bit, but I'll show you the starting process. You can see I've got a little stopwatch sitting here. Uh, I was going to use a digital uh, display on my phone, but it's, it's, it, if I try to do that, I know I can tell you with certainty it's going to ring. It's just Murphy's Law. Uh, besides, this is my old grandfather's competition stopwatch, so this is one that I used to use when I was a kid shooting combat. So, uh, in any case, let's go ahead and start that and we'll just start digging in here. Oh, it's got a good bite right off the bat. So they claim that you can get through this in about 25 minutes. Let's see what it takes. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I can tell you right now that this is going to be a pain in the butt. My hand's already starting to cramp and we're only one minute in here. 
can see when this little hand here gets down to six o'clock, that's 15 minutes. So we're just gonna do some manual time lapse and see if we can make this a little bit faster for the viewers. Yeah, we're about three minutes in and I'm already wishing that I would have uh, lashed this or taped it to a longer handle or something because there's just not much to grip onto. But that would be cheating, so we'll just keep plugging away here. By the way, when I say that the uh, handle is very small to grip, that's no negative against the tool. I realize that it's a small pocket tool. That's what I like about it. Okay guys, we're about eight minutes in or roughly one third of the way time-wise. I'm at the point now where the side of the blade is actually binding against the uh, rebar slot, the cut slot. Um, I don't know if I should spit on the thing or what, but I don't want to dry it out worse after it dries. Okay, we're almost to the halfway point guys. I, I switched sides and I'm just plugging away here. I was still running into the uh, side of the blade binding a little bit, so I just stopped for a sec, touched my uh, finger to the uh, side of my nose against my face, just got a little bit of uh, face grease on the side of the blade, and it immediately made a big difference. So, just a tip there if you're ever <laughs> trapped under uh, earthquake damage or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear, but it's actually raining out right now. It's been a while, so I'm enjoying it. I've got the back door open. All right, you can't see the stopwatch, but we're about 18 minutes in here. Hard to say if I'm going to hit the time or not. You know, when I first started going, it took a nice bite into the metal, and I thought, oh, wow, okay. And then about one minute in, it was like it stopped dead, so... Who knows? We'll see. So I went from, uh, how's this going to work, to, wow, it's going to work, to, how's this ever going to work? But, you can see, the blade's below the starting cut, so we'll keep going. 19 minutes, just about. Might have to keep the uh, camera running at this point, because it feels like we're getting close. I don't want to stop the blade to look down in there. Okay, well, I just saw it. We are close. I don't know if we're a minute off. We're probably two or three minutes off. And we're at 20 minutes right now and 15 seconds. You can hear the sound changing. The harmonics of the rebar. Holy cow, we're actually through it. Oh my gosh. That's pretty funny. You can see it's bending. I'm just going to keep going until it drops here. Okay, we're at 20 minutes and 50 seconds. Just about to 21, I'm sorry, 21 minutes. 21 minutes, 55 seconds. Okay, uh, that surprises me. I didn't think that I would uh, beat that 24 minute time. <laughs> I still can't believe I did the, this test. I typically don't have the patience at the end of a work day to do something like this to kill 25 minutes, but uh, let's take a look at the blade here. You know what? The saw itself looks like it's in good shape. It looks like I could keep cutting with it. It by no means you know, destroyed the blade. It seems like it's definitely more than a one-time use. Let me clean this a little bit here. Uh, so yeah, hey, a good tip there. What I did is you just kind of pinch the sides of my nose, um, right where my face meets the nose here, and just kind of uh, rubbed a little face grease on there, and that uh, sped things up quite a bit. So yeah, did a good job. Let's wrap this thing up here. All right, so impressions, overall impressions. Uh, I'm really impressed with the uh, 
little saber cut saw. It did great and, it, and I could still cut with it. Um, I could keep going. The razor blade, however, they need to fix that situation. That was a joke. I mean, it, it's supposed to be a razor blade. It should be extremely sharp and it wasn't even as sharp as a $2 steak knife. It, it was uh, pretty sad. Um, this is something I'll probably carry just because this thing held up really well. I'd be curious to know how many pieces of rebar it would go through. Wouldn't that be a crazy test? Uh, I don't think it's for me, though. I, I don't think I want to do that three or four more times. <laughs> In any case, a uh, handy little tool. Maybe I'll contact uh, UST and uh, see if they'll send me another one of these. And maybe I'll even give them this YouTube link. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. You'll probably see this on my last-ditch lanyard in the future. Yeah, it was kind of a sneak peek. I'm not going to show you the whole thing right now. It's just a teaser. Uh, but I will show that to you soon. And this is just something that I carry every single day. Even if I'm not carrying my USK or my uh, EDC backpack, I usually have that. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you soon. Patriot out.